What's up my movers and shakers? I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and this is not a GW Kick My Dog video. So I was walking my dog the other day and Games Workshop came over and just kicked my dog. Full disclaimer going into this, this is a topic of discussion. Yes, I'm aware that this video is also part of the problem. Yes, I'm aware that being on YouTube full time constitutes this being a job and therefore as a creative, I should be able to and have to work to a brief when necessary. And yes, I'm aware of how marketing works despite the shortcomings and trappings of a thumbnail to guarantee views. And yes, I'm aware of any intentional irony that may come up in this video of me talking about what I'm talking about whilst also doing the problem of what I am talking about. With that out of the way, let's take a big old bite of this huge dick sandwich, which is YouTube videos talking about Games Workshop, Warhammer, and the community and the politics around it. No, not politics. I don't want to get into fucking Games Workshop politics. Jesus Christ, what a sad, depressing pit. YouTube videos talking about Games Workshop as a business and a culture. God only knows what I will have named this video. And I can only apologize for my patrons of how much of a complete cock I look in the thumbnail. So Games Workshop is killing miniature hobby YouTube content creators and miniature hobby YouTube content creators are killing the hobby. It's a brutal cycle. And I've seen quite a few videos kind of touching on this subject. And I kind of want to open a bit of a dialogue and a discourse to sort of just figure out where we are with that. But most recently, I watched a video by my good friend Andy at Blackjack Legacy about how he feels like most of us video makers, that is. We've been backed into a corner in terms of the content that we produce or feel we have to produce. It was a video we put out the other day and I really just got really felt for a minute, to be honest. You can check the video out there, probably. I do encourage you to go and watch that video if you can. It probably is more eloquent and more personable than mine will be. But I am going to summarize. Because of the innate indoctrination, strong word, bear with me, that Games Workshop has over its hobbyists, there's a strong issue that whenever a YouTube channel or content creator that is well known for being associated with the product of, you know, Games Workshop Warhammer, that when they deviate from solely and specifically just doing that line of products, their videos tank. When they look at other game systems or other miniatures, their view counts do suffer as a result. In plain terms, if I do a video where I build a board for, say, Star Wars Legion, which I would love to do, that video will probably receive about 25% of the views that it would if I'd done a Warhammer board. And between you and me, it's the same fucking board. 98% of that board is, is going to be identical. Sure, I'm going to put like a little Tatooine hovel house sandy desert thing there instead of putting a right angle corner gothic ruin over here but other than that they're fucking identical same shit different binary star system and given that maybe 0.5 percent harsh statistic bear with me of viewers will watch it and actually go away and make it and i think that applies to most terrain channels the viewership distribution gets even weirder now before we go any further i understand how it works i understand why it works and I understand there isn't really a solution apart from the eventual like heat death of Warhammer and Games Workshop, which will eventually come with overmarket saturation, but I'm okay with it. It's just that some of your other favorite content creators probably, probably aren't. I've been in the creative industry quite a long time, over a decade, and I quickly learned quite early on that if you want to make a living selling things that you've made, you need to sell things that sell. The problem comes when you're a creatively centered person and everything you put out because you're so busy trying to make a living is the stuff you sell. You realize you don't actually enjoy making the thing that you enjoy making. And sometimes that does mean you need to be a garbage tear shill fuck. The current YouTube landscape, however, seems to require that constantly. Andy states in his video that he spent a lot of time trying to get smaller, independent game systems out into the limelight. But in order to do that, he had to actively compare them to Games Workshop and Warhammer products. And that's not a social thing he had to choose to do as a, like a personal challenge. That was a thing where he physically needed to put the object he was comparing it to in the thumbnail to guarantee 
that people would care and click the video. If you wanted to do a video about Drop Zone, he'd have to compare it to Kill Team, which, you know, isn't kind of the best example because those two are... Yeah. It's such a fucking weird, odd environment on YouTube. I kind of love it. It's a new set of challenges, but also it's fucking weird. Let's look at another channel, Geek Gaming Scenics, like Luke who runs it. We're good friends, we chat all the time, he gives me the inside scoop and, you know, we, we kind of joke about these video titles and thumbnails that we have to concoct sometimes. Here's a video called Make Warhammer Tiny. 231,000 views. And it's a scaled down Kings of War video. It's building a board for Kings of War and 3D printed smaller Kings of War models and then they play it with a Kings of War rule set. That right there is top tier fucking hustle for the YouTube algorithm. It has shit all to do with actual Warhammer, I guess, but in fact, no, it has a lot to do with actual Warhammer because the hook gets people in to learn something that's actually universal. In spite of what miniatures you're using, this information is really useful. If he'd called it Make Kings of War Tiny, I'm pretty sure Luke would be eating off noodles and pasta for that month because it's Kings of War. And that doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, it's a great game system with a great miniatures line. It's basically Warhammer Fantasy rank and file, but with a rule system for people that still enjoy life. And on top of that, it's just an exceptionally affordable miniatures line. You know, weirdly, every few days or so, I get offered something for free by a smaller independent miniature production company. Not a brag, I am going somewhere with this. And I'm just like, I love what you do. I have some of your stuff. I respect you're an independent miniature line trying to get over but there's not really any point in you sending me some of your stuff because if you send me a box of archers, what do I do with that? I could make the best video around it possible, but if I have a unit of archers that are clearly not Games Workshop manufactured or Warhammer branded, not a lot of people are going to click that video. And that's not snobbery on my part at all. I like this stuff. I enjoy this stuff. I did a whole video about you know, independent miniature lines that were cool and you should check out in 2022 clickbait. But that's kind of just the truth of this little corner of YouTube. Like it's not, not the forbidden algorithm doing all the devil's work. The algorithm puts stuff out there and if people don't click it, then the algorithm is like, oh, it's, it's not going to work, Chief. You're going to have to do something else. And by do something else, I mean change the title, change the thumbnail and put a space marine on the thumbnail. Ever wanted to learn how to play Kings of War? Here is a space marine to tell you how to play it. YouTube metrics, analytics, statistics are all quite hard enough to get your head around as it is without kind of just throwing in the social aspect of will people click it, do people care? Of course, if you've ever wanted to start your own YouTube channel, you might be interested in this sponsor message. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has all the classes you need to get started, grow and succeed on the YouTubes. The go-to classes for me will always be YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. He's got all the info on how he's taken his channel from just being a kid and shooting on webcams and, you know, reviewing tech products to casually just shooting on red cameras with motorized programmable arms and nailing gorgeous promo shots every time. Or maybe you want to take your travel blogging a little bit further with classes like YouTube success, creating exciting travel videos. And there are so, so many more. If you want to give Skillshare a try, the first thousand people to use the link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can find the link down below and in the pinned comment at the top of the page. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Excellent. So let's take a look at my own channel real quick. Not too much because I absolutely fucking hate talking about myself. Self-reflection, great. Talking about yourself, fuck no. Here we go. Let's go with restoring the rogue trader land speeder. There we go. That'll do. So it's a video on how to strip miniatures, right? And how localized branded paint stripping products are completely devoid of value for people outside of the distribution zone of those specific products. And it shines a light on worldwide available standard trade chemicals that are available to everyone that are ideal for stripping miniatures. The restoration of the actual land speeder is probably about, if I'm being generous, 25% of the video. <laughs> if I'd actually sold the video on the premise which it is, which is how to strip your miniatures more effectively for cheaper and easier with, you know, unbranded products, Papa wouldn't be feeding his cat those little gourmet treats he likes for that month. Here is the most shameful thing I've ever done. <laughs> okay, so I, I buried a really solid travel vlog about my new life as basically an international camera operator, burgeoning international camera operator, okay? 
and I just put it behind a thumbnail about my cat destroying Warhammer because I was leaving him unattended in my house where there is Warhammer. Fucking hell. <laughs> but to reiterate, I'm not complaining about any of this. Uh, I understand the hustle and I understand I'm part of the hustle and I'm totally okay with the hustle. It's a hustle I've been part of for a very long time. My soul was gouged out many, many years ago in the film, music and marketing industry. And I'm not mad. I'm, I'm not really bothered. I, I, I don't mind as long as I get to make a nice video and predominantly my Patreon community enjoy it, then I'm pretty much happy. I don't mind having to dangle like a Warhammer flavored dreamy in front of the algorithm to just get some eyes on the video. You know, there's so much cool shit out there that I'm hesitant to pull the trigger on and do videos about so much decent gear on my shelves. And I'm like, ah, here we are. The Resident Evil 3 board game has hands down the nicest board game miniatures I've ever seen. I would love to paint them. But it won't get many views because it's a franchise tie-in. It's not a Warhammer franchise tie-in, especially. It won't help the channel grow. And I don't have time to paint them just for myself if I'm not putting it into a video. So I'll just put that back. The entire Prodos Aliens vs Predator line of miniatures complete. I mean, I'll get to it eventually, but it will definitely be in a video where I don't need a minimum amount of views to get a sponsor payout on it. This all sounds rather cynical. I'm not cynical. I'm just opening a, opening a conversation about this, really. And to reiterate, I'm not sad. I'm not angry. I'm not especially fussed either way. I am enjoying the way that I'm doing things at the minute. It's just a shame because I think how many other creators have got interesting ideas or interesting game systems that not many people play and they have them set on their shelves and they want to put them out, but also they will get so very little back for doing that. So what does it mean for the future of YouTube miniature wargaming, hobby wargaming videos on YouTube? So that's kind of where you guys come in is I'd like you to leave a comment regarding this topic as a whole. I'm not really interested in understanding how GW works as a business because I understand that because really the issue isn't so much about Games Workshop. It's about the consumption of the content around it, if that makes sense. There is a, there can be a disconnect between the two. Like why does a nuts and bolts video about painting and Kings of War skeleton have 500 views and a nuts and bolts painting a skeleton video of a 20 year old Games Workshop model kit that's still in circulation why does that have 20,000 views? You know, it's literally the same thing. So in your opinion, what is it that makes people click the Warhammer content and not absolutely anything else in the miniature hobby? Remember, this is not a GW kicked my dog video. Just got back from the vet. Had to have my dog put down, even though it was already dead. This is all Games Workshop's fault. That is a big fucking spider. That is a thick ass boy. Are you alright? Thought you climb in my if you climb in my backpack, my missus is gonna fucking hit the fucking roof. Don't bother. Whoa! She has got some fucking speed on her. Big Ungoliant motherfucker. Where was I? Oh crap. Uh so no, this is not a GW kick my dog video. Surely there's only so many times a video can be redone saying the exact same thing. Like, but what is the truth behind contrast paint? Was the research into them funded by Nazi gold? Or was it a secret recipe someone's grandmother cooked up 50 years ago? And now she is mysteriously murdered and the recipe has been stolen. My grandma left me a contrast paint recipe in her will, but I came round and the whole place has been ransacked. She's been murdered. This is all Games Workshop's fault. There's a few questions there. There's some information and quite a lot of problems generated, not by me, but that already exist in the ether and some of us are starting to pick up on. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other content creators, big and small, asking these same interesting questions. I love doing this. I've enjoyed my most recent Warhammer videos more than any other videos I've done. And more than anything, I've enjoyed being a part of the Patreon community that I helped found the best and most wholesome hobby community on the entire internet. So you don't need to tell me to chill out in your comment or to stop being mad about it because I'm just kind of asking questions and seeing how everyone else feels about it. Believe me, the day that you realize your own immune system is slowly eating away at your octave nerves and constantly reducing your quality of life, you learn to care.
very little about the social politics of plastic toy soldiers. Discuss. Cheers. I'm out of here. Just got back from the vet. Had to have my dog put down, even though it was already dead. This is all Games Workshop's fault.